I've had a lot of comments like this on my last video where I've talked about people have been coming to my therapy office and struggling after their sexual assault experiences in virtual reality. Firstly, yes, VR is different to the real world in the sense that somebody is not physically keeping you glued into the room. So I understand where these comments come from, but, and it's a big but, these cases are real and are happening. So I hope you can have an open mind when I explain how this happens and why they don't just take off the headset. When we're in a stressful or traumatic situation, our body, not our brain, has a number of responses. You might know about the fight or flight stress response, but there is also the freeze response. This is the moment when we want to run or fight, but we get stuck. We cannot move. It's not a decision. It's not being soft. And it's literally bodies and brains controlling your response. I've also said in my video, a lot of these people who've seen previous real world trauma were triggered in that moment. I hope this never happens to you, but when it does, it's like the original traumatic event is happening again in real time. A lot of people commented that they shouldn't use VR. Some people don't even remember they're traumatised until something triggers it. But more importantly, do we really just want to tell people who've had past traumas they can't play games in VR? I don't think we should restrict the fun of gaming. And my video was made to bring awareness to the issue so that we could find tools and solutions for people to feel safe and play.